What's up, everyone? Welcome back to this ninth episode of Draft Day Dynasties. I'm C. Jackson Cowart, the community manager here at Wolverine Studios. And in this episode, we'll be diving into the transfer portal, which is one of the coolest new features, arguably the coolest new feature of Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2022. If you haven't seen any of our previous eight episodes, you can catch up on those, all of them, on our YouTube channel. And if you missed Gary's Wolverine Day stream last night, I highly recommend checking that out right here on Twitch, right after this episode. Stick with us for the next half an hour or so, and then go ahead and check that out. Uh, if you weren't there, he showed off an awesome new feature that he's been working on for future releases. And to be honest with you guys, I really think it could mark a new era in Wolverine Studios games. Uh, I know that's lofty praise, so if that's not enough of a tease, I'm not sure what is. So definitely check out that stream from yesterday. Um, and speaking of Wolverine Day, I just want to thank each and every one of you guys, uh, those of you watching this now, um, it, really anybody that participated in any of our social media giveaways, those of you that shared your favorite games, your favorite features, things you want to see in future releases. Uh, I know that it meant a lot to Gary and really to everybody a part of this team. Uh, honestly, it's crazy to think that Wolverine Studios has been around for 16 years. I came into it about a decade ago. I've been playing it pretty pretty religiously, been playing these uh, these titles for the last decade or so. Uh, and it's just it's crazy to see how far it's come from the early iterations of those games to now. And it's even crazier to think what these games might look like at the 20-year mark, or honestly, even just in a few months. So, uh, But that's the future. Right now, we've got some roster spots to fill for the Hawaii Spartans, so... Let's go ahead and just hop right into this. Um, if you're watching us live on uh, Twitch, please feel free to hop into the chat. Let me know what you think about the roster, about our transfer options as we get underway here, or really just anything else. Um, I don't have any fun giveaways for you like we did with the stream yesterday, but I don't know. Maybe if you comment in the chat, I can rename one of my incoming recruits after you or something. I don't know. We Name it after one of your great-grandfathers, something. We can figure it out. We'll sort that out later, but right now... We have some business to attend to. So if you watched the last stream, you know we had a huge decision to make with Hawaii. Do we stay or do we go? Uh, if you're looking at the screen now and if you watched last week, I think you know what the answer was. We decided to stick around with Hawaii, uh, but we have some work to do. So that started with filling out the coaching staff. The next thing on our list is transfers. And this transfer portal is, the, like I said before, it's the biggest new addition to the game this year. And you can remake your team on the fly, or in my case, maybe make your team for the first time on the fly. So uh, we're going to hop right into that. Uh, but first on the chat, Bill says, hello, the new stream yesterday was must-see streaming for Wolverine Studio fans. I agree, and I'll take it one step further. It's must-see streaming for non-Wolverine Studio fans. Uh, I mean, I think that the, uh, maybe I don't want to, eh, it doesn't really matter if I if spoil the, the big reveal. If you haven't seen it yet, you'll catch up anyway. Um, the new top-down view for simming, for the 2D sim, I think it could bring in a lot of people who aren't already fans of these games uh, and expand our community in a way that on, in some ways couldn't be done unless people are visually arrested by it. That's a, a big issue for a lot of people who don't want to get into the quote unquote tech sim community. So uh, I'm really excited for that. But uh, and I, I could talk all day about that. I'm really, but yes, Bill is right. You absolutely need to see that stream, but do it after this one. So uh, you see the roster right here. Like I said, on our last episode, we had to fill out the staff. So let's just remind ourselves who we have on board here. I'm pretty excited about it. We kind of uh, learned some new things along the way about what, uh, what assistant coaches are, are willing to take in the uh, staff hiring phase. And we got pretty lucky. We have Andre Spencer here as our top recruiting guy. You look down here, he's a 51 recruiter. Now, granted, he doesn't know anything about offense, defense, scouting, or player development. He's getting it. He's, he's not exactly the highest reputation coach uh, that you're going to find in college basketball, but I think it's going to work for us. Lionel Pinckney, really excited to get him in here. 63 defensive skill. Um, that's going to help us with scouting defensive players, but it's also just going to help us actually win some games, right? One of our issues last year, and especially in that tournament game, uh, against Long Beach State is we just simply allowed too many points. I mean, our, our defense was atrocious. Um, part of that is trying to run a 1-3-1 one, one with uh, guys that aren't fully adept at that, but that really is an excuse after uh, learning that for the entire season. you got to be able to play better than that. So excited that picked in there. And then Andrew Morris, my man, the scout. Nobody scouts like Andrew Morris, uh, especially not on the big island. So with those guys in, uh, in tow... I think we might have a shot to bring in some players 
a bit above Hawaii's pay grade, so to speak. Um, so let's check out the roster before we dive in here and just see what do we need to fill. Um, coming into this year, there was a bit of a re-rate. That's right. We are looking at different ratings with these guys. So let's take a peek at that before we hop into the transfer portal. Um, for those of you that have followed along uh, religiously and diligently, and I appreciate those that do, you know how much I love Amari Charity. I will admit some of that was because he was he was projected to be a four and a half star or five star guy, and I think he was already sitting at three and a half or four stars last year. Well, that may have been a bit of a misnomer. Might have been a, a freshman uh, folly on our part, thinking that a first year player was already that good when he probably wasn't that good of a recruit to come in. Uh, I do still like Charity as a part of this team. If I had to guess, I probably will still want to start Charity, if only because of that 67 defense right there. Um, you know, he's athletic enough to play the position at power forward, especially if we're going to keep running the one three one, which I think we will. Um, that defense, high steal rating, if he's sort of the, the chaser, quote unquote, in the back, um, you know, if you're familiar with the one three one defense, you have the one guy planted in the middle. And then you have the point guard up at the uh, top of the zone. You have your two wings on the side. Then you have your power forward and back who's just chasing the corners left and right, trying to force turnovers, trying to chase off three-point uh, shooters in the corners. So I like Charity for that spot. I think he's really well-equipped to do that. He's athletic enough to play a bit like a three, uh, but then he can be a bully too. So that is that's one position that I feel good about is power forward. Uh, you know we have Blake Thompson as kind of a rising sophomore. Didn't think much of him last year. He didn't play much, but him and Charity, I feel decent about that. Uh, center is going to be an issue. We have Victor Willis is our senior, but then we have a freshman Marcus Floyd who's going to be good eventually. I mean he is a, a big hefty guy, 6'10", 271 out of Fremont, California. But right now, all he can do is shoot inside and quite literally nothing else. I mean, this is not a man that you want to trust with any basketball skills unless he is within uh, three feet of the rim. So if we could get a center to play right away, especially trying to play a Princeton offense with somebody that's not the best passer in the world. Now, 50 is not bad, but uh, not an elite passer. And certainly, if you looked at Willis's stats last year, our team was worse every time he was on the court. So... I think if we could get a reliable center in there to play next to Charity to spell Willis a bit, and if we could get a point guard, because right now we only have one point guard above a half-star rating, and that's Craig Willis. That's the youngest Willis brother. If you remember, Todd Willis was a senior last year. Victor Willis is a senior now. Craig Willis is a junior. I feel really bad for the uh, Willis mother. That's a lot of kids in a three-year span. But... Uh, Craig is not necessarily the point guard that I'd like to build my team around. Now, he's a decent passer, uh, a good passer at that for a school like Hawaii at 70, but he is just atrocious defensively. He's not somebody that's going to be able to generate any buckets, which Dante Waldman last year was somebody that I did feel like we could put him in there, and he could score from time to time. That's not how I feel about Craig Willis. And while the outside shooting is good, he's not a sharp shooter here, and he's not going to be able to really create his own offense. I mean, the scoring is so low. He doesn't tend to drive, which I would kind of hope for a little bit more of that in the point guard. But Princeton offense, look, outside shooter works for us. So I think Craig Willis is a good first man off the bench, six guy overall, but I don't trust him to be running the show right from the get-go. So let's just go right into transfers and see what we can get. Now, for those of you who have not done a playthrough far enough, or maybe not done a playthrough at all, uh, to get to this transfer portal, you are in for an absolute treat. This is a beautiful, beautiful screen. Uh, it's, it's, the whole thing's been reinvented. Gary kind of built this, um, you know, new, I don't want to say from scratch, obviously it'll look a little familiar to those who have played the games before with transfers, but really rebuilt a lot of the logic here, um, a lot of the layout to mimic what college basketball is nowadays, which is sort of just unbridled free agency. So that's how we're going to treat this here. We are going to ink a, uh, a free agent here, and I think we need to be focusing on point guards and centers. So with a school like Hawaii, where we're not going to be able to really convince some of these top guys, right? I mean, you know, we'll look. There's probably, yeah, a couple 20-point scorers in the mix coming from uh, Indiana State. Is that, or is that McNeese State? I don't know what's going on there. Um but I don't think we're going to get these guys. I mean, it's just not the caliber of player that Hawaii is going to be able to pull. So 
And let's see, is there anybody that we've scouted that we're familiar with? Yeah, a lot of Fs. A lot of Ds and Fs. Scroll down. There is one player that we played against, or at least have scouted. Um, last year, he played for Akron. And he knows man-to-man. -man. He does know the Princeton offense. And he's honestly a decent passer. So we don't have any reason to think that he would want to play for us. But he's somebody that I wouldn't mind tossing some uh, time to for one of our scouts to go check this guy out. So let's go ahead and scout and contact this guy. We have 30 of these per period, so I don't mind using him. We have a decent amount of money to work with this year. We have two scholarships to fill. So we already know a little about Romain Jackson, but let's go ahead and scout him anyway. Learn a little more about him. See if we can convince him to come play for Hawaii. Um, Ultra in the chat says, uh, says you're playing pro basketball, not college. Yeah, that's, uh, that's certainly not true looking at the screen. We'll get that sorted out. Uh, I think we can fix that post-production here, but I appreciate you calling that out. Uh, hopefully some of these guys will eventually make it to the pro game. Uh, if we can get them to play for Hawaii and have a good enough season here. So we know this guy's a B. Uh, I'm not really too intrigued by any of these Cs, especially since it's low interest. So let's sort by interest. Okay, so we have some top fives. We have some decent players here. So at the very least, we're going to scout and contact all these guys because there's no reason not to. It costs you 100 bucks. That's fine. That's Hawaii can handle that. Uh, I think we just scout all these guys just in case. I mean, if you've played through a transfer portal in your saves, you know how quickly this can move. So it's not, as, it's not like regular recruiting where we're going to sim a week and all these guys are going to be waiting for a phone call. They're not. Some of these guys are absolutely going to be gone uh, by the time we hit this little button up there. I don't even want to accidentally try to hit it. Uh, so we're going to have to move quickly here. But I do want to scout all these guys just in case one of them falls through the cracks. Uh, Ultra in the chat says, a quick question. I bought the pro game yesterday. Is it just like USA leagues or are there European leagues too? Uh, it's, I, I believe it's just your, uh, excuse me, just USA leagues in terms of uh, just the default format. In fact, I know it is, but you do have a lot of flexibility with the sandbox mode uh, to create a custom league. So you can go in there and you can set your, your team numbers. Um, you can set some of the other settings in the league to make it a bit more like a European league if you're replicating one in particular. Or uh, you could just make a league from scratch, right? And, and kind of create your own monstrosity there. So uh, not to fall, but there are a lot of customization options uh, with the pro games, which is a pretty cool feature for that. So looking back here, we have four point guards that we're in the top five for. And if you look a little closer, we're four for this guy, one for this guy, one for this guy, and two for this guy. All right, that bodes well. Uh, I feel really good about that. The only bummer is I don't really know anything about him. These are all players that we haven't played before. We haven't scouted them. So let's see if we can learn a little bit more info or if there's just anything that's going on here. All right, he transferred from Air Force. Um... Yeah, I just, I don't think we're going to learn a lot here. We know this guy's from Air Force. This guy is from North Dakota State. This guy, I'm guessing, is going to be from Toledo, yep. And my man Frank Cotton is from Louisiana Lafayette. So not a lot to learn there. But if we look at their stats, right, this guy played a lot of time at Air Force uh, and didn't do a lot with it. That's a little bit concerning. It's at least nominally concerning. Uh, he did turn the ball over a lot too. It's not ideal. You look at somebody like Rick Tennell. So he's a sophomore. I don't love using that many years uh, of scholarships on someone that may or may not actually be that good. Um, but you look, he only played 13 minutes and he averaged five points, two and a half assists, uh, 1.2 rebounds. Got about half a steal in those minutes. That's pretty good per minute. But I just, oh gosh, it's a tough call. I don't know whether I feel comfortable offering a scholarship to any of these players without knowing a little bit more about them. And if we don't offer a scholarship to somebody now, we could lose them. So that's the risk you run. Um, these two have Hawaii as their top option. They were both decently efficient on a permanent basis. But I kind of like this, this Tanel kid. He's 6'4. 
about 200 pounds. He looks like he might be somebody worth offering a scholarship to. I think the worst case scenario is we have four guys that want us in their top five and we don't take a chance on any of them. So I'm going to offer a scholarship to Tanel right here just in case. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's got to be our call here. So I'm going to offer a scholarship to Tanel. And then let's look at the rest of these guys. Statistically, nobody's really standing out. Um, yeah, not a lot we can learn here. So let's just sort a little bit. Let's sort by assists, right? Because we're a, we're a happy passing team in Hawaii. Let's see. Who averaged the most assists per game? That's kind of interesting. Jason Finger from Eastern Kentucky was a shooting guard. And he only scored seven points a game, but he did have 5.8 assists. I feel like he could be a converted point. Yeah, yikes. 4.7 turnovers. That's not great. We'll at least scout this guy, right? We'll learn a little bit more about him. Uh, I think we can learn more about this guy who was averaging uh, 12 and 5. Jonathan Jordan feels decent there. And then anybody else that stands out here? I mean, you got a, a 4.0 senior out of, uh, I believe, did he play at Illinois? Yeah, he played at Illinois, so big-time transfer. That's interesting to me. So we'll take a shot on him. We got a few of these scouting contacts left. I guess we might as well just use them, right? Nothing nothing wrong with doing that. Just kind of spamming a few of these. Trying to get the guys that are averaging at least four assists a game. And then... So if we show ratings, I don't think that'll change anything because I don't think we know anything about any of these players. Yeah, we don't. So we'll keep looking at stats. Looks like in the... Uh, Bill says, The transfer portal's tough the first few years because the recruiting ranking is missing for players who are auto-generated at the start of the association. I like to look for award-winning players from small conferences and higher-ranked players from major conference uh, schools. I also skip the not-friendly, disruptive forces and dislike players. And then he says, Wow, that's a ton of assists for a shooting guard. So I agree with that first point. Uh, if you can figure out that a guy is a disruptive force and he's coming to you in the transfer portal, you already know that he is a transfer candidate, right? Because he's in the transfer portal, he's a disruptive force, something did not go right with his original team, and it's probably his fault. So I'm with you there. I don't like going for guys who are disruptive forces. Unfortunately, we don't know yet in this first round. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that shakes out after this first round of bidding. Um, and then the one other thing I want to do is I want to sort by, let's go power forward and center only. And I want to see which one of these guys are passing a lot. Because if we can get a nice passing center, I think they'll have some success in our system. All right. So we have a power forward averaging 2.3. We'll take a shot. We have a center averaging 1.9. I mean, I'm not screaming to the heavens about that, but that's fine. And then this guy's interesting to me. He's out of Marist. And maybe take a shot on some, some North Carolina roots here. It's tough when you don't know a lot about these guys to start. And then here's here's a player out of Stanford. We'll take a shot on him. Other than that, we're really just shooting fish in a barrel here. So see if we can recognize anything here that really stands out. I like the, the size for this guy and this guy as well. Yeah, we'll leave five in our pocket. There's not a lot we're going to learn here. So... Let's go ahead and advance. Uh, oop, don't want to advance that, right? Just want to do the one advance. All right. I think we're still in the same spot, right? Yeah, I think we're still... Nothing's really changed. Yeah, transfer session. Oh, I think we will have to do the advance here. All right. Let's see if we got lucky. We'll know. We'll have an email pop up here. Well, we'll have one anyway, but if we get an email from that one guy, we'll know that we at least snagged one. All right, decision time. Did we get him? I think we have to, right? We were the number one team. There it is. Rick Tunnell. All right, so let's see what the deal is with Rick Tunnell. It's probably not going to be what we hoped. That's all right. Two-star, three-star potential. Oh, he's a really good shooter. He doesn't know the Princeton offense, and he doesn't know our defense. So that's a bummer, but he's a good shooter, good passer. 
Now he's same issue with our other point guard. He can't score, but he's definitely better on defense. I think we may have found a starting point guard. I don't love it, but I think it's good enough. So we'll go back over here, see if there's any other relevant emails. I don't think so. Don't really recognize any of these names, so that doesn't mean anything. But let's go over here, see if any of these guys we scouted are still available and still interested. So this time I'm just going to sort by overall, right? Because they're going to show up here if we've scouted them. And it's going to go backwards order here. So we'll see. Oh, there is an A. Oh, wow. Okay. So right off the bat, we're going to we're gonna scout and contact this guy again. And, man, he's not interested in us. But part of me just wants to throw the scholarship at him. Because that's, I mean, <laughs> how often do you have a chance to get a guy like that? Um... And these are decent schools that he is considering. It's it's tough. It's probably not going to be worth it. If we don't shoot our shot now, though, then we're not going to have a chance to get him. I'm going to do it. I'm offering him a scholarship. And then just keep scouting these guys. Keep scouting the ones that we like. Letting them know that we like them. I uh, got a couple centers now that we can sort by ratings. Let's see. We have a couple... Uh, Centers that we've already reached out to here. He's a decent passing center. He's a decent passing center. Let me just make sure this guy's not a disruptive force. He probably is. Nope. Excellent work ethic. Very glad that I offered him the scally. All right. So we learned a little about those guys. I see a 95 athleticism here. That absolutely catches my eye. So I'm just going to go through and scout these Cs a little more. We don't need to bring a D player in. It's not going to do any good. Like, we're not going to play them. We're not going to start them right away, at least. They're probably just going to transfer because they're going to be buried in the depth chart. So I don't really concern myself when I'm in the transfer portal with lesser guys once I know that they are a lesser guy, right? I might as well just save the scholarship for uh, the recruiting season and maybe find a diamond in the rough. I don't need to spend it on a guy who I already know, you know, he wasn't good enough to start for his first team or at least be happy there. So I think that's good. And then these top five guys, we'll keep contact with them just in case something falls through and we decide that, you know, maybe we learn a little more scouting. Maybe maybe we feel like we haven't gotten our, our uh, point guard spot filled out enough yet. But I feel pretty good about that. So let's go into this next session. I don't think we're going to get Will Ole, but maybe we're the only ones that offered him a scholarship at this point. And if we are, that would be pretty fortunate. All right. Calm before the storm. Did we get him? Did we get our guy? Breeze hops in and says, hello, did I miss anything? Uh, yeah, the one thing you missed is we got Rick Tennell in the transfer portal. He's nothing special, but he's a better point guard than what we have. And we're going to see right here, did we get another? But I already know that we didn't because, yeah, not not enough emails in the inbox for us to have gotten him. Uh, uh, we, we'll figure out in a second here whether he's gone, gone, or just didn't want to make a decision yet. So we still have one scholarship available. That's that's not a good sign. That makes me think that he decided that we were not the team for him. So let's sort here. Let's show ratings. I think this is going to end up... Yeah. Yeah. No luck, unfortunately, on our man Will Ole. Uh, but Romaine Jackson. He's only got two choices here. It makes me think he could be here for the taking. Maybe New Mexico and San Diego have just not shown enough interest. He's not a disruptive force. Uh, he's disliked, certainly, but he's, he's a decent kid. Um, you know, he's got some knowledge in the Princeton offense. He can shoot inside. He can shoot outside. He can pass. This is our guy. This is absolutely our guy. So we're going to scout him again. We're going to offer a scholarship to him. He's a sophomore. I feel good about that. And then Moro Morrissey. Oh, Moro Morrissey, man. Maybe I should offer it to him. He is a better passer, but he doesn't know the Princeton offense. He's a good rebounder. I honestly do like this guy as a fallback option, but... Oh, he's a disruptive force. Look at that. Look at that. All right, well, it's a good thing we didn't offer the scholarship to him. So let's just go through, scout some of these Cs again. You never know when we might get to the end. Maybe we learn that one of these guys is actually a B after all. Or maybe we just get desperate. But let's keep scouting these guys. And we have the one scholarship already offered to Romaine Jackson. 
And, man, I just don't think we're going to bring this guy in. I just don't see it. He doesn't know our offense. He's a, he's a good guy. You always feel bad about saying no to a good guy, but I don't think it's in the cards. And then he's, you know, he's okay, but he's not friendly, and he doesn't really do anything well. So I think we're just going to cut our losses on those two. So, all right, we have our contacts out for the players that we want. Breeze, you're just in time to see us land the best center on the transfer market. I think. I hope. I pray. Oh, man. Only two emails. That's the two email icon of death there. We didn't get our guy in that round, but please, oh, please. Oh, we lost him. We didn't get him. That sucks. That hurts. That is such a bummer. We did turn uh, Zamiro Sims into an interested player. Now, he did not get any playing time when he was at uh, Central Michigan. And he doesn't know the Princeton, but he does know the 1-3-1. Okay. And decent shooter, decent passer. He's a better scorer than the guys we have on board. And he's decent on defense, too. Is he a disruptive force? He's not. This might have to be our guy. We might just want to get some point guard depth, knowing that our point guards are really not good. Uh, because I don't, I don't know if I'm seeing the centers here. I mean, Bill, what do you think? Moro Morrissey is an absolutely perfect fit on the court, but he's a disruptive force. I don't know if that's worth it. So he might still be there. I think you have to offer the scholarship again if a player waits to make a decision. Well, I think he's gone because he's no longer B. Yeah, I think we lost our friend. I think we lost our main guy. So I think we might have to take a shot here, either on Moro Morrissey, knowing that he's a disruptive force. But man, this is this is a guy who cleans up on the glass. Incredible shot blocker, good passer, good inside scorer. He's a 4.0 student, went to Capital Christian High School. I mean, I don't know what more you want from a kid, but he is disruptive. And that is not what you want. So, oh, it's tough. It is a tough decision to make. See if this center is any better. I don't think so. Man, I hate to do it. I hate to do it. But I just, I'm not sure I'm feeling it with Zemiro Sims. I don't know if he's really going to make our team that much better. And I kind of, I kind of think that Moro Morrissey might. I mean, this, this dude's kind of a pain in the neck. But he doesn't care about playing time. You know, he's he's somewhat likable. He's durable. He's got a good relationship. I don't know why he transferred. Uh, but this dude can play. I mean, look at this. Six six points in 11 minutes? I mean, come on. He was just misused. So let's take a shot. He's not going to play for us. But let's take a shot. Taking a shot on Mora Morrissey. I know Bill's cringing right now because he's a disruptive force. And I'm with you, Bill. That's not normally my speed. But Hawaii's got to win some games or else I'm going to be looking for a new job. And it's not going to be a good job. So, all right. Let's keep scouting these guys. Oh, man, Sims really wants to play for Hawaii. Um, and I'm going to take a shot. See if there's any other scorers left on the board. Because by this point, if you haven't heard from a, you know, a team, it doesn't even have any top choices. Look at that. So, we'll just we'll spam the, the top of the scoring board here. Man, 12 points in 19 minutes. That's incredible. Uh, and just see if we can get any diamonds in the rough here. Because you got to take some shots when you're a mid-major like Hawaii. So let's fill out just right here to fry. And then let's see if we got lucky. I'm not holding out hope, but we'll see if we did. All right, we have, <laughs> we have an email. We have an email in the inbox. I think I know what that means. I think we got our guy. Hell or high water, we got our guy. There he is, Moro Morrissey. All right. Welcome to the team, Moro. I love the name Moro Morrissey. I'll just say that right now. All right. So we'll go transfer portal. We have no scholarships left, so we'll just finish this up. I'm curious to see if we missed out on any potential gems, but it doesn't look like we did. So let's go ahead and advance through this. 
And once we're done with this, we'll take a look at the roster. We'll see what we got with Morrow. And then I think we'll call it a night uh, and we'll pick up on recruiting with the next episode. But that's the transfer portal. Those are some of the risks you have to take, right? You have to figure out, do I offer a scholarship to someone without even really knowing whether he's someone that could fit the team? And then once you get a few sessions in, you learn some unsavory information about some players. You realize that they're still available for a reason, right? Moro Morrison would not be available by my estimation if he was not a disruptive force. Now, maybe he would be. I don't know if the code agrees with that, but just play along with me here. I don't think Moro Morrison is still sitting there if he's a good kid. Um, and I don't want to besmirch, you know, the Morrisons, Mr. and Mrs. Morrison, or, or whatever whatever his parents prefer to go by. I don't want to I don't want to besmirch their parenting job, but Moro is not the type of kid that I would uh, tend to bring in to a team like Hawaii, but we're going to take a chance because we need talent. We need a center. I don't really love Victor Willis. Um, he's probably going to get the starting job if only because he's the incumbent starter and, you know, he, he earned it with some of his play last year, but Moro's coming for that man's job and Moro's probably going to be upset if he doesn't get the job. So, all right, this is processing the end of the transfer portal and then let's take a look and see what we got. This is what our team looks like at the end of the transfer season. So we only lost one guy, if you remember. And let's see how this looks. Moro Morrissey, he's pushing. He's pushing Victor Willis for his job right now. He's a, let's, let's sort by center. Victor Willis and Moro Morrissey. Morrissey's a better inside scorer. He's a better passer. He's the same ranked rebounder, but we know that he's got that cleanup player type. So I think he's probably going to outpace these ratings. The same on defense. He's... Better at blocking shots inside, better at drawing fouls, and he's more athletic. I don't know about you guys. I think Moro Morrissey might have to be the starter, if not in game one. By some point midseason, I think he might wrestle that job away. So, uh, man, that's interesting. This is going to be one interesting squad going in. Not a lot of stars, but certainly some players that can make an impact, especially if they learn how to run the 1-3-1 zone, which I am just absolutely passionate about uh, for teams that can figure it out. So that'll do it for this week's episode. Really appreciate you guys joining on this Thursday night. I know there's a lot of good basketball going around that you could watch, so I appreciate you watching the basketball on your screen right now. Uh, two things before we go. You guys know them by heart if you're regular watchers. One, you got to subscribe to our Twitch channel. We really want to see you there. We want to see more subs, more of you guys helping support us on Twitch. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to Gary. It means a lot uh, to the entire Wolverine Studios team to have people subscribe to us on Twitch. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you get a free Twitch subscription just by linking it to that account. So uh, if you haven't done that already, no excuse not to. Um, I've offered uh, free a bit of a free giveaway in the past for people who have done it. You haven't taken me up on it. So I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Anybody who subscribes to us on Twitch, whether you already subscribe or whether you subscribe after this episode or anytime, shoot me a message on Twitter or Discord with a screenshot. I will find you the cheapest flight to Hawaii within your chosen time frame. And I might even find a good hotel for you too. Uh, no promises on what the price range will be, but I will find you a trip to Hawaii. All you got to do is click that subscribe button on Twitch. So uh, do me a favor. I'll do you a favor there. And then the other thing, don't forget to post about your teams and careers tomorrow. Hashtag Franchise Friday. Uh, post the hashtag on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, Discord, Slack and our original forums on WolverineStudios.com. Let us know what's been going on. Have you guys been winning championships? Uh, have you had any success in the transfer portal? Maybe more than I have. Let us know what's happening in your careers and your saves. Hashtag Franchise Friday. That's tomorrow and every Friday. If you ever want to reach out to me directly, you know where to find me. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Cowart. You can find me on the Discord server. If you comment in there, I'll try to get back to you quickly or anywhere on the Wolverine Studios forums. Appreciate you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you next time.